So once the molds are finished, what you want to do is you want to just coat it with some mold release spray. Just want to coat both halves of it with that mold release spray there. That'll help demold. And then you just want to prep your surface. What I like to do is uh, just take a bit of tin foil, kind of fold it up uh, on itself there all around the edges. Uh, that way, when you go to actually pour the resin, you know, you're going to get some spills. It's not going to want to leak out and get all over your surface. The next step you want to do is you want to go in and you want to rubber band or use some kind of clamp to hold the two halves of the mold together. And as you can see, I am not holding back. I'm using all the rubber bands that I have available, really getting it super tight. And then I'm taking a bit of like a silicon putty. This is just silly putty that I have available. And what I'm doing, and this is a step that's not necessarily mandatory, but I'm just going through along the parting line and just sealing it, just an added step there. Um, I'm going to show an example later where we actually designed a channel inside the mold that uh, allows for a bead of that putty to be run through so you don't have to do this step. All right, so once that's all completed, you are ready to begin prepping your two-part resin mixture. And so what we used was the Vitaflex 60 product from SmoothOn. I've, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, makers on YouTube use the SmoothOn products, and they've used them to great success. They're a high-quality product. They have a lot of different materials. So I was using one of their urethane compounds. So it's a little producer rubber-like um, product. Uh, and it fits, you know, they have a shore hardness scale, so you know exactly kind of what you're getting into. But uh, there I just uh, put the Part A mixture in. And the Part B that I have, um, since I've had this product for like 10 months, uh, the Part B definitely has a limited shelf life. And it's it formed like a, a crust already on the top. So I have a little bit of like solids in there. But yeah, so I'm just pouring that mixture, trying to get them out to uh, equal levels. The nice thing with Smooth On is... Their products are mixed to uh, mixed by weight or mixed by volume. So I'm just doing volume here, just trying to top it off, get it pretty even. And from there, I'm starting to mix. And what you really want to do is you want to get all around the sides, the edges, everything, get it really thoroughly mixed up uh, to get ready to pour. But yeah, once it's all mixed up, we'll get right to it. And so now you can begin pouring. This is what this pouring process looks like. I will say uh, that this mixture is like maybe a step under honey in terms of viscosity. And just because this mold is kind of a constricted environment, not a lot of surface area, relying on gravity to um, to pour this uh, pour this resin in is, is not advised. I definitely would recommend a syringe. And uh, as you can see, kind of towards the end of pouring this, I had to lay the paper towel over the pour spout and blow the resin down into the mold, uh, which it's not pleasant. Syringe is, is such a better option. So yeah, word to wise there. I had to become the human syringe for this experiment. And uh, I'll tell you what, my cheeks started to feel like Dizzy Gillespie's by the time I was done with this. Uh, w one thing I did is um, uh, once it was all folded up, so when I realized it was filled is when it starts to... Uh, coming out of the vent holes, the, the resin starts coming out of the vent holes. I just topped off the 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 top, I just poured the, whatever I had left up on top of the uh, that second half there uh, just to make sure that I had completely filled it. And uh, at that point you just have to let it cure. And after it cured over the weekend, uh, we demolded it, had to just cut away some material from the top of the mold and cut away the pour spout, but it was able to demold very easily. It didn't need any any prying tools. And this was a finished product. So um, as I mentioned earlier, if you have a vacuum chamber, you definitely need to degas the resin before you pour it. Um, otherwise you end up with these bubbles here. Um, and you can tap on the, uh, obviously you can you can tap on, on the mold there as much as you want, but you're not gonna be able to get all the bubbles out. So um, had some bubbles there on the top. Uh, despite all the vent holes I put in, uh, but there was uh, very, very few to none at all 
um, in terms of bubbles everywhere else. It was, it was just on that top surface.